Good afternoon to everybody who just joined, and welcome to today's Communities at Sea and Fishing Data How Tuesday webinar. I'm Carl Villacoba from the Monmouth University Urban Coast Institute. Uh, today we're going to take a tour of the portal's newly expanded library of commercial fishing data. We recently added close to a thousand maps showing fishing activity by catch and gear type, as well as a new search tool that allows users to view fishing activity for over 200 individual ports along the East Coast. Combined with the dozens of maps that were on the site before, these new layers comprise one of the largest li online libraries of commercial fishing maps in the world. Um, it, it's really something to see, and I'm glad that you could be here to see this. Our main presenter today is the guy who was really instrumental in converting millions and millions of electronic VTR data points into the easy-to-use maps that you'll see here today. His name is Jim Trimble, and he is with the Grant F. Walton Center for Remote Sensing and Spatial Analysis, or CRISA, at Rutgers University, and a fellow member of the Mid-Atlantic Ocean Data Portal team. A quick note before we get started, I will be recording this webinar for the benefit of those who couldn't join at this time. Um, and it will be posted on the portal's blog and webinar page within the next couple of days. We'll be having a Q&A session directly after the presentations, and I look forward to hearing your questions. We would ask that uh, you try to hold your questions until then, unless there's something that comes up that you see that's confusing, that you'd really like to ask about right away. Um, and if that's the case, you can go ahead and type it straight into the chat, and we'll address it on the spot. Uh, with that, I'd like to just quickly kick things off with um, an, a brief overview of the portal for those who may not be too, too familiar with it. So I, I often put the portal in perspective uh, by showing an image like this when people ask what it is. Um, when you go to the beach, put your chair in the sand and you look out at the water, you probably see something pretty similar to this, which is just this perfectly serene scene. Uh, you look out for miles and miles and you don't see anything, and it's just so relaxing that people have actually shown that there's mental health benefits to just sitting on the beach and looking at, at scenes like this. But the reality is actually much different, and especially here in the Mid-Atlantic. The ocean is a very busy place, and it's getting busier all the time. Uh, here is a quick map that was not hard to throw together on the portal at all, just showing um, commercial fishing activity, um, maritime activity, commercial or recreational boaters. Um, you've got offshore wind probably on the way in the near future with all kinds of other recreational and um, uh, uh, business activity going on at sea. The portal really helps people um, see those things, and by being able to picture them and see how things relate with one another, or in some cases conflict with one another, it helps to make smart decisions. And to aid that, we have about 4,000 different map layers now organized under about, a, well, as of today, a dozen themes. Um, we also have some instructional and educational resources on the portal that are not maps, like a portal blog, um, an ocean stories section, which is sort of our online magazine slash digital mapping platform. We have a calendar that we keep to keep people up to date on ocean planning and educational type of activities, conferences, things like that in, in the region, and we host semi-monthly webinars like this one. Uh, we also maintain some tools to help users share maps and collaborate in groups around projects. The Mid-Atlantic Ocean Data Portal team is currently um, comprised of Monmouth University, where I work, Rutgers University, um, our developer Ecotrust out of Oregon, and we work um, under the guidance of the Mid-Atlantic Regional Council on the Ocean, or MARCO. One of the things that the portal has done here is taken 
a lot of different map data that, that was scattered under um, several under umbrella several um, umbrellas out there in different government agencies and and so forth and brought them into this one site where we have everything that we would need really geared toward the mid-atlantic region um, we develop data in partnership with uh, the Northeast and share it, and including the fishing data that you're going to see here today. Um, we share data with the state portals, and, and they share it with us in some cases. And uh, the same goes with um, BOEM and NOAA with their marine cadaster, which is a federal level portal. Portal had a very big day back in December of 2016 when the first ever Mid-Atlantic Regional Ocean Action Plan was um, adopted by the White House. It was drafted by about a dozen different federal agencies and the, um, about a half dozen states from Virginia through New York, all to work around ocean issues um, of common interest. And one of the things that the Ocean Plan did was it included some language that committed all of those signers to consulting the portal on um, ocean issues, not as the uh, exclusive and, and one place that they have to consider, but one of them. And, and that was an important thing. So with that, let me jump into the portal. First thing that you see when you go to portal.midatlanticocean.org is this splash page. And up here is the way to get to our marine planner mapping application, which is the main event of the portal. Really quickly, just want to show you a couple of things that may be um, useful to, to you as portal users if you don't know. We have this blog here where anytime data like the new fishing uh, layers that we just put up when they, de when they come online, we usually will post um, some kind of an announcement here that will tell you how to find it, how to use it, um, if there is a webinar to be um, uh, organized around it, you'll find information about that here. We have these ocean stories, like I mentioned, um, just a good example right here on the topic of commercial fishing. I did this one about a year ago, a, a ride along with a scallop ship out of Point Pleasant, New Jersey, using some of the original uh, commercial fishing maps that we did. And what you see as you scroll down is it tells the story. You have some uh, an interesting mix of maps or videos. And of course, this map strip up here, which changes as you read along. And the map helps tell the story. And the story helps explain the data on the map. Um, we've also got a calendar here for in information on webinars and um, upcoming events of interest. Our data catalog, where you can find information about um, further, further resources, like, um, for, for example, with some of the fishing uh, data you'll see here some summaries about what it is, where it came from, downloads when, uh, when available. And this under the help, the using the portal section, uh, some of the things that you may see us do here today, um, if, if you want to learn more about them or if you get a little bit lost at a later time, you can usually look on this page to find some quick tutorial information, short videos, um, short write-ups, that kind of thing. Um, and in some cases, we'll post links to an entire webinar video like this, if it's helpful. And finally, this webinar will be posted to this page and to the portal blog once, it's, uh, once the recording is processed. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Jim, who can walk you through the new maps. Thanks, Carl. Just give me a sec here and make sure that we're sharing everything. Sounds 
I see you. Okay. Okay, I'm Jim Trimble. i have uh, responsible for a lot of these data sets that you're seeing here. I'll give a, a very uh, brief background of some of the data sets, and then we'll just jump in and start looking at the data on the portal. So uh, the data is uh, often referred to as, um, as so I'm seeing that it was hard to hear. Is that okay? Is it better for everyone or no? You're okay. If you can get a little louder, that would be better. Okay. Uh, so what are VTRs? Um, they are vessel trip reports. What do the vessel trip reports do? They are actually a requirement for uh, you know, any commercially licensed vessels are required to submit a VTR for every fishing trip, regardless of where the fishing occurs or what species are targeted. Um, the VTRs are used by NOAA Marine Fisheries to provide information on where and uh, when the catch occurred. And they can either be paper or electronic. The VTRs are really used as the basis for the communities that see data. So what are communities at sea? Uh, it's based on the work of Kevin St. Martin, who is a professor here at Rutgers. Um, they're developed by linking the VTRs to vessel permit data. Um, the VTRs actually include uh, a lot of information, uh, trip date, number of crew, species, uh, trip locations. Uh, and the permit data includes the vessel's principal ports, as well as other variables uh, you know, regarding the vessel itself. Um, by linking the two of those data sets together, uh, the fishing communities can be categorized as a function of port of origin and major gear type uh, used on the vessel and then mapped. And this is, you know, it, se it seems a little strange. It'll probably make a lot more sense when we're actually looking at the maps. So how are the communities at sea maps created? Uh, the trip location point data is used as input to create these density polygons. Uh, it represents visita visitation frequency or fishery days. It really is a, it's a labor metric. It's a number of hours spent at sea. Uh, the communities of sea maps show total labor, including, cr including crew time and the time spent in transit to and from fishing locations. Uh, they do not show other variables, such as the number of pounds landed. I mean, there obviously is a, a, is a relationship to the amount of time spent uh, fisher days are the amount of labor spent and the amount of uh, fish that is actually caught, but that's not really the uh, the idea behind the communities at sea. Um, the results of the maps can be interpreted as uh, maps of community presence. So what's really important about this is, is the review and feedback of fishermen in the communities. So the draft maps were reviewed by diverse fishermen and fishing industry managers throughout the Mid-Atlantic and New England states. And there's a sample of some of the maps that were actually, and, and these maps were actually, some of it was done online, and a lot of them were actually printed out and shown in uh, sort of informal group meetings. Uh, there are obviously are considerations and caveats with any data set that you use. Uh, with the communities at sea, you have to understand that this is self-reported data, so there can always be errors in data collection as well as transferring the data electronically. Um, these maps only show fishing conducted by vessels holding federal fir fishing permits and confidentiality uh, rules required by NOAA fisheries and industry, uh, or known as the rule of three, it may result in smaller uh, port and gear combinations being underrepresented. So that's that. Given, that. given that quick background overview, we'll just jump right in and start looking at some of the maps. So here's the, uh, the, the portal per se. And uh, as Carl mentioned previously, we would click on the map. Give it a second to load. And the communities that see data, luckily, I mean, there's a lot of data on, on the portal. You can usually search for stuff which, uh, to help um, find some of the things that you're interested in. Uh, luckily for us, the communities at sea uh, data is actually located in the fishing theme. So if we were to expand that, you would then see uh, the commercial fishing VTR. So initially, that's how we would, we would want you to, to, to look and explore uh, some of the communities at sea data. And then there's this other tool that I will talk about shortly. But when we click on this, we're going to see um, these, what we were talking about before, these sort of uh, gear categories and year ranges. So you can see we have you know, 
bottom trawl large and small. We go down to dredge, uh, gillnet, long line, pots and traps, and then we have the four year uh, uh, four year range groupings: 96, 2000, 2001, 2005, six. So these sort of five year groupings. So I'll just select uh, dredge uh, for the most use most recent year range that we have. And you'll see that by selecting this one layer, we're actually getting two different uh, layers that are showing up uh, on the map. Well, uh, the first thing that we're seeing is the sort of, this sort of large, and, and again, this would be a map of fishing effort or you know, community presence. And this is the uh, totals for the entire region. And while this also is the, you know, the the focus is the Marco portal, the Mid-Atlantic region. The data sets expand all the way from North Carolina uh, and include uh, areas in the Northeast um, to go up into the Gulf of Maine. It seems a little silly to not include because fishermen don't really, um, you know, the administrative boundaries between the Mid-Atlantic and, and the Northeast um, is, again, just administrative. And, and fishermen don't, uh, fishermen are basically going where the fish are. So um, the great thing about these data sets and the drive about this is that they're a bit more interactive than some of the other layers that you're going to see on the portal. So if we click anywhere within, some of the, within this regional map, we should get uh, information associated with the types or, or basically the communities that are actually at that location, that actually go to that spot in the ocean and are actually actively fishing there for this, for whatever selected um, Community to see that, that you have. So just, it's a little silly here where it just says yes for everyone, but it's actually listing the individual ports um, or the individual communities that are, that are at this location. So again, we can click anywhere within the regional map and it should give us slightly different results. Now, uh, also with the ports, um, if, you, if you, we'll zoom in a little bit here and we'll close this thing. If you click on any of the ports, that will also give you specific information for, again, this community, which would be the gear grouping and the year range. Uh, it'll actually give you the total number of trips, uh, the total number of fisher days. That actually is the metric for, for labor that, that's, that's used as, as this map, as well as a percentage of um, the total trips and the total fisher days as a function of the entire region. So you can get an idea of, of you know, how much activity, uh, or you can compare ports based on their activity. You can look at some of the larger ports in New Jersey, some of the, lar uh, some of the ports that have larger or uh, greater amount act of activity, Point Pleasant, Lang City, Cape May, and then you can look at maybe some of a smaller port, such as Port Norris, you're going to see not as much as compared to some of the larger ports. So this is the way that we want to just generally look at, you know, it, it, I always feel it, it, there's, there's so much data going on here, and it's, it's very difficult to sort of try to get a, the end users to be like, well, heck, where the heck do I start in terms of looking at this data? This is, this is how we would really want you to come in. We would want you to look at the commercial fishing BTR, select any of these, um, these uh, community gear groupings, and, uh, and go with it from there. Now again, one of the other things that we have, uh, the specialized tools for actually digging in deeper, is this, this theme here that's known as the fishing communities at sea. You'll see as you expand it, you're going to get those same gear groupings that we're seeing up here. Uh, but then if you expand any one of those, you'll see, then go, it then starts going down into the year ranges. If we click on that, we're kind of presented with just like a question mark or like what do we do? Uh, the great thing about here is that if you want to explore some of the individual ports, you'll, 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 you can actually go in through here. Go in through here, like say for instance, Atlantic City. If we type in the first couple of letters, we should get uh, the port listings. Now, when we type that in completed, it, what it's doing is it's providing us with a polygon of just the Atlantic City area um, overlaid on top of the regional map. Uh, if, we, if we then go up into the active range here, we can zoom in. So if we were clicking anywhere on the map, 
turn off the Atlantic City regional map. If we clicked anywhere on the map, we would see that, yes, Atlantic City is in this area. But by then using the Communities of Sea tool, we can then bring up the range of Atlantic City. We can then go in and then say, if we're, OK, well, that's Atlantic City. Let's, let's also then possibly look at Point Pleasant. We have Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Turn off Atlantic City. And then we can see the difference. So we can see where Point Pleasant goes versus Atlantic City. It's a little difficult because of, what, of the same colors if we were to display both of them at the same time. But you know, we can do a little, these little tricks with uh, just turning things on and off to, to compare them. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, I would encourage any users to sort of uh, go in and explore some of these different data sets. Um, hopefully, this is just provides a very quick overview. And uh, if you're interested in uh, looking at these data sets more, uh, to go to the portal and explore them on your own. Carl, I mean, how do you want to handle it from here? Uh, you know what? Can you walk through the VMS too? Okay, we can we can look at the. Uh, I am certainly not the expert at VMS, but we can certainly certainly bring some of that stuff up. The VMS is uh, it's similar but different. The VMS stands for the uh, Vessel Monitoring System. That's actually a real-time. Uh, it's also part of a, a requirement for certain types of uh, fisheries in the North Atlantic, um, where they are actually having GPS tracking, and they will actually show uh, complete. Whereas the, the VTR data is point-based, and then we generate some of these surfaces that you're seeing. Let's actually turn some of this stuff off. The VMS data will, and let's actually turn this off as well. Let's actually just say like that. Go to the VMS. You can see when you when you hit the pull down for the VMS, you can see that's much more. It's uh, it's based on the fisheries type as opposed to um, the gear groupings. There is a certain relationship, and the two of them can tend to line up. So before uh, with the, with the communities at sea, we were looking at dredge. That tends to be the sort of scalloping. That's just what would be sort of a catch-all for the scalloping and clamming. Uh, if we would actually look at some of the VMS data, we would see that scallops and clams are sort of uh, uh, brought out separately. You'll see here, too, that um, we, ha we do have certain year ranges. It varies depending on, on the fishery type. But you'll see for the VMS, we have, uh, you'll see like just a total amount, and then it's broken down by the sort of uh, lower speeds or, or less than four knots. Um, I think it's, oh, it's almost always four knots, or five knots for scalloping. That's usually an indication, because we, you're actually seeing, so we'll actually look at this instead of keep, keep talking about it. So when we look at surf clam uh, clogs, you're going to see this is actually all of the uh, activity for, um, for this fishery. And it's actually including transit. Um, but if we, if we actually just look at areas that were less than four knots, or basically the assumption that that's where active fish is, fishing is going on, you'll see that, it's, that it eliminates a lot of those transit lines. And what we can do is we can actually we can look at the VMS data and compare it to the, uh, to, the to the communities at sea. And you can see there's a fairly good correspondence in terms of the areas that are being mapped. Uh, probably what you're seeing here, too, is that because the um, communities at sea is probably inclusive of clamming and scallops, you're only seeing the, it, the community that see is larger than the clams. Actually, let's actually go and we will add the VMS scalloping as well. Or actually, we can add it additionally. We'll just have to bring it up here. Yeah, there we go. And you can see how they sort of correspond fairly well. Carl? Yeah, why don't you um, kick it over to me, and I'll just walk through a couple of other things that we have available. And uh, a, a note on the um, VMS, 
I mentioned earlier about how the portals work together, and that's a really good example. Um, our partners up in the Northeast actually developed those VMS um, phishing maps, and uh, um, you know we, we have them on our portal, and um, I believe if they don't have the VTR at this time, they will very soon. So um, um, it's just a, a good example of partnership between both portals and adding to the data available. But anyway, um, just running through a couple of other uh, phishing maps that we have available. None of these are new, but just wanted to call attention to them. Number one, artificial reefs, believe it or not, has been running neck and neck with the um, BOEM wind areas for the last year or two as the most clicked, the most frequently activated layer on the portal. Um, it's a pretty cool one. You click on the screen and you'll get the um, names of each of these artificial reefs. And as you start lining them up with some of the other maps, you, you see that uh, they very much are um, the cause of a lot of traffic out in those areas. So um, one example might be this recreational fishing layer that we have here, which is party and charter boat fishing. Carl, um, we're not seeing your screen right now. Oh, no, oh gosh. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Share my screen. How about now? Can you see now? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Yeah. So let me start that over. Um, and thank you for the heads up on that. So artificial reefs right here is the one that I mentioned a few minutes ago is one of our um, most activated layers. And you can click on any of these shapes here to get the name of the artificial reef in that area. And you can see how they relate to especially a lot of the recreational fishing um, that goes on throughout the region. This layer right here shows party and charter boat fishing trips from 2000 through 2009. And again, you can click on these sites to get a pop-up that will tell you um, how many trips uh, were taken to that spot in that decade. And a lot of times you see that uh, they line up quite well with the locations of um, the artificial reefs. We also have here fathom lines. Our legend will um, show the depths. We have um, the most current management areas. So for example, the Lautenberg deep sea coral protection area, um, scallop management areas and a few others. And then in some of our other sections here, like recreation, we did a recreational boating survey a few years ago. Um, we, I, I mean by um, the Monmouth University Urban Coast Institute and Marco, um, did some surveying throughout the mid-Atlantic states um, of where people went on their boats, um, how they spent their money, some things like that. And one of, one of the maps that came out of that was this one, which shows um, these points. And here's the legend, which decodes what they are. And it shows um, what people did on their trips, wildlife viewing, swimming, etc. But the green ones are all um, fishing. So when you see a congregation of some of these somewhere like the Great Bay, down here in um, South Jersey, you know that that's a pretty good, um, pretty widely used recreational fishing spot. Um, let's see. And I believe um, also under the New Jersey recreation drop down here, NJDEP Sport Ocean Fishing Grounds, which were compiled um, through some surveying of um, um, fishermen in New Jersey. And you can click on any of these shapes to get um, the name of that spot, a little bit of a description about what makes it special, 
and some kind of presence, non-presence indicators here of what you might find in those areas. I believe New York has something similar. Um, New York recreational fishing. Yeah, quite similar. So with that, I think that's most of the data in a nutshell, and I think we'd like to um, open this up now for um, questions from everybody. Who's got a question? And if you can just type it into the chat room, I'll read it out loud uh, for the benefit of those who will be um, watching the webinar later. So this is from Highwell. Hi, is it possible to extract fisheries landings values? Jim, you well, want to take a crack at that? Well, that, yes, it is possible. And uh, part of the VTR records actually does have landing data. And, but that wasn't the focus of this particular data set. There are some researchers at Rutgers that are trying to relate to that, trying to, uh, in, in particularly in uh, regards to climate change, to see how species are moving uh, back and forth, but also still trying to link the two between, like, say, is you know fishing effort and what is actually being landed, is there any sort of relationship, and is that changing over time? That's something, you know, will that actually appear on the portal at some point? We're sort of talking to some of the people here, but uh, currently there are no plans for that. You are welcome. So Jim, let me let me throw a question out to you. Um, you mentioned earlier about a lot of the outreach that you did, not only for this generation but the previous uh, generation of communities at Sea Maps um, with the commercial fishermen. Um, can you tell us a little about the kinds of feedback that you got, and you know how it might have informed the maps that you created or the metadata? I. I was only involved in one, you know, directly in, in one of the meetings. But there's been a lot, I mean, Kevin St. Martin uh, uh, has been doing this work for over 10 years. Uh, his original work was done up in, in New England, in the Northeast. Uh, and he's talked to numerous uh, communities of fishermen. And that's helped sort of guide him in terms of the gear groupings. Mm -hmm. You know, people people are like, well, you know, I can't really understand the gear groupings versus, like, say, the fisheries. But um, Kevin has found out by this, uh, the, the feedback and the back and forth that a lot of the, you know, say, the large trawlers, uh, the, you know, the large trawlers tend to hang out with each other. The small trawlers tend to hang out with each other. The, the dredge people tend to hang out all together and tend to congregate in certain ports or, and uh, have certain communities. So that, that's, that sort of interaction with the fishermen was helpful in terms of guiding that process. Also, too, I mean, when you're actually looking at data, you know, you're just looking at these you know, uh, very bland records and creating these maps, uh, it's very important to sort of, I mean, the only, the only way to sort of error check and to, to know, you know, does this actually make sense, is to show it to, to the fishermen themselves. And that, that was actually very, I mean, that was very important. I mean, if you, you come up with this methodology and you, you do some of the uh, computer work to generate these digital maps, um, if they don't make sense or they're right, wrong, um, what's the point, right? So mm -hmm. want, as an aside, at one point we had actually uh, made a mistake in some of our processing. We were actually down in Barnegat, New Jersey, showing, I believe, I don't know if it was long line or... Uh, bottom trawling, and we were looking, we had made special maps just for that specific port, uh, and we were showing it to the fishermen. 
and we had, by mistake, had included possibly the port for Virginia, maybe in Chincoteague. And by, when we showed them the, the maps of their, you know, we showed them the regional maps, and they, would, they were very agreeable. Yes, this, this is one of those activities. And when we showed them the maps just for their port, they were like, oh, yeah, this looks like us, but there's this area down in Virginia. There's no one from here actually goes there. So there, you know, th that sort of local knowledge and, you know, it, it, I mean, it, it, was, it was definitely a mistake on our ends, but it, the fishermen were very quick to point out, like, you know, yeah, this, this looks right, and heck, this is completely off base. So that was a very interesting part of that. Mm -hmm. I have up on the screen, my screen is showing now, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this is showing right here the description for, in the data catalog for the commercial fishing VTR section. And I would point to it as probably, um, you know, one of the, the, the more detailed um, entries that we have anywhere in the data catalog for any of um, the layers. And a lot of what it has here are um, caveats that were identified, and you had mentioned earlier, um, that were identified by uh, the, the commercial fishing stakeholders that um, our team has talked to over time to really reflect some of the concerns that they had. And, and certainly I would um, uh, encourage people to check that out and um, give this a read and, and consider it um, as you use these. Who has another question? Another one from Highwell. Is phishing AIS data likely to be incorporated at some point? Uh, yes, it is. Um, we are um, currently working on some more recent AIS uh, data maps. And let me show you what we have at the moment under maritime. Currently, we have 2011, 12, and 13. And um, right now we have, under testing and review, um, some new maps that will show up to 15 and 16, and then hopefully um, not far into the future, 2017 as well. They will actually have a breakout of, um, of uh, commercial fishing vessels. Right now we have all cargo, passenger, tanker, tug, tow. So we're adding that as well as um, another category, which will um, just be other, other uh, vessels that don't fall under any of those categories. So for example, possibly something like um, uh, a research vessel or something like that. Um, so they will be reflected, and you can single them out um, in the next group of AIS data that we have on the portal. Hopefully that'll happen, certainly at some point this summer. Sure. Who else has a question? Or anyone, anyone out there have an interesting story about how they have used the phishing data on the portal. Okay, I guess seeing none, we'll end up a little bit early here. And, um, you know, just thanks again to everybody who joined us today. As I said earlier, I will have a recording of this posted on the blog and webinar pages over the next couple of days. You can follow us on Twitter for an announcement of when that's posted, or just keep an eye on those pages. 
And as, as always, if you have any questions, be sure to email us at portal at midatlanticocean.org. That's the email that you'll see at the bottom of the portal page on the footer. And um, I and um, uh, a couple of other members of the team keep an eye on that account, and we'll get back to you very quickly, I promise. So with that, um, thanks again, and everyone have a great day. And thanks, Jim, for uh, making the time to do this today. Thanks, Carl. Thanks for running it.